Magandang araw, oras na para sa pinakabagong balita sa lagay ng panahon at sa mundo ng science and technology. Ako po si Jel Miranda and we welcome you to DOS TV, Science for the People. Patuloy ang ating special coverage sa ASA NAST Philippines International Symposium sa Taal Vista Hotel, Tagaytay. Abangan ang aming panayam sa mga speakers dito sa symposium. Kaya naman tutok lang dito sa DOS TV, Science for the People. Joining us today is the professor from the Department of Physics of Ghana Academy of Arts and Sciences, Network of African Science Academies. Let us all welcome Dr. Paul Kingsley Bua Baswa. Good day, sir. Good morning. Good morning. So can you please tell us about your topic on today's discussion? That is ultraviolet uh, induced fluorescence, chlorophyll fluorescence mm -hmm. in monitoring fruits using imaging systems and this experiment is quite simple when you are making use of light emitting dials lead it can help you to know the fruit ripening maturity as well as to predict the shelf life of fruits because normally you go to supermarkets and you do not know when the fruit was put there and when the fruit is supposed to lose chlorophyll content. That is expiring date. So this system is quite simple, even though it has not got to the final stage, but it can be used to predict how the chlorophyll has decreased as time goes on in the supermarket. What is the indication that the chlorophyll is losing or have been decreased? Actually, chlorophyll in fruits determine the freshness of the fruit. Mm -hmm. And as days go by, the chlorophyll, that helps with the photosynthetic activity, mm -hmm. goes down as if you are continuing manufacturing food. So if the chlorophyll content minimizes it means the food quality is diminishing and this is what we don't want and this is where the device can help us to see how long this has been on the shelf so what kind of fruits have you been tested using this process i've used on lemon i've used on mandarin it can be used on papaya and any fruit that has got greenish yellowish color, mm -hmm. the lead device can effectively do so. Mm -hmm. What will be the setup? Let's say you have the farm or you have this uh, 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 space. What will be the setup? The setup is such that you have a small electronic uh, circuit mm -hmm. and then you have a battery in the device and then you connect it to a fiber probe mm -hmm. and then when the light is emitted it gets to the fruit mm -hmm. and the fluorescence from the fruit or the reflectance mm -hmm. will be analyzed in the device and then you can tell whether the chlorophyll content is low mm -hmm. or high mm -hmm. so it does it vary with each fruit or with each, uh, for let's say the sizes of each fruit? Chlorophyll content actually go with each fruit mm -hmm. and whether 
you are shining the light at the head of the fruit or the tail of the fruit or the side of the fruit mm -hmm. because chlorophyll content is not uniform mm -hmm. on the fruit however mm -hmm. if the chlorophyll content is decreasing with regards to time mm -hmm. then you realize that homogeneously mm -hmm. the chlorophyll content will decrease when it's getting to the latter days mm -hmm. of it what would be the greatest potential of this uh, process I think the greatest potential is for people to see the quality and not to accept everything on the shelf mm -hmm. of the supermarket mm -hmm. or even in the open market in Philippines mm -hmm. as you find the fruits in the open market. Mm -hmm. It needs to be checked to see whether the chlorophyll content has gone down. So aside from fruits, can this be used also in vegetables or, or foods? Yes, it can be applied to leaves. Okay. And any vegetable that makes use of leaves, it can also be applied to it. And in the same way, I think the expiring date can be predicted. Mm -hmm. And that is the essential thing for this device. So after you gather all the data, where will you give the, all those information? After getting all the details to the consumer, he wants to see the values that is being indicated that chlorophyll is decreasing for him to know whether the fruit is edible, is fresh, or is not. We are now at the final stage to look in that terms whereby the consumer can make use of it. But however, we have not reached the final stage of it. But with the preliminary stages, the device works eff eff effectively. Maybe, and right now we can use here in the Philippines? Yes, right now you can. The moment you are able to make the device, you can easily use it on the field in Philippines. And it's very simple to make the device. At this point, who have, ad who, um, have ab adopted uh, this method? Actually, uh, myself and my colleague were sent to Lund, Sweden, to look at the technology. Then when we came back, we saw that making use of laser diode is expensive. It will go to the tune of about $8,000, but by using LED, it comes down to about $1,000 mm -hmm. per device. What about the safety? When you say we used LED, is it safe? LED is very safe because it doesn't consume energy. Mm -hmm. And the new technology is such that even LEDs are being used in cars, mm -hmm. in uh, traffic lights, and other things. The energy saving concept is excellent. Mm -hmm. Does it give any effect on the fruits? No, no, no. Uh, by making it, you should make sure that you don't hit the fruit. That is why we have a current control, such that it has no effect on the fruit, but rather to give the fluorescence or the reflectance mm -hmm. from the surface of the fruit. Mm -hmm. But how will be the, the testing for each fruit? Or does it make, um, I mean, it would be in bulk or each fruit? You can do an online inspection. That is, when the device is improved on industrial scale. Mm -hmm. In that case, as the fruit pass by on the, uh, in the industry, it can be inspected to see fruits that are defective or not defective. And it can be used in the canning industry mm -hmm. for that matter. On the global scale, yes. Okay. But on a small scale, yeah. you can use your small device okay. and try to test it on your own. Mm -hmm. Like, as you go to supermarket and you are supposed to uh, do pricing yourself yeah. by shining yeah. the, in the same way, that is how it's going to be. Any future plan on this project? Uh, the only limitation is funding to be able to make it 
into a commercial thing. That is what I'm anticipating. However, if I get any assistance, I think I can do that in my country. Mm -hmm. Do you have any final words, sir? Yeah, my final word is, uh, I think as a developing country, we have to take much interest into research and government should help research so that the little ideas that we have can become productive for the ordinary citizen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. That was Dr. Paul Kingsley Bua Baswa. Narito pa rin po tayo sa Taal Vista Hotel, Tagaytay para sa special coverage ng AASA NAST Philippine International Symposium. And now, here with us today is the postdoctoral researcher from the National Research Foundation, South African Young Academy of Science. Let us all welcome Dr. Karen Cluet. Hi, good day to you, ma'am. Very nice to meet you. I'm very happy to be here uh, in, mm. in the Philippines. So this is my first visit and I'm really excited to be mm -hmm. here. And this is a really lovely conference also about a very important topic in science. Mm -hmm. You know, we as, as scientists need to really break out of our silos yeah. and we need to use our science to make a positive change in, in, in this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you please share it to us um, about your topic on today's discussion? Okay, so let me tell you a bit about myself. I'm a postdoctoral researcher at our National Research Foundation at one of the research institutions, mm -hmm. right? So I'm working on human hair. Okay. And what I'm doing, I'm doing multidisciplinary research. So now in science, it's good to link different fields together. So I, what I do is I mix biophysics, techniques in biophysics, mm -hmm. and I combine it with biomedicine. Mm -hmm. So what, why do we do that? So we want to look at the chemical content in hair. Right, and we try. We want to try and link these chemical compounds to certain diseases. So what we do is we sample hair. Right now, um, just to give you a bit of context ab ab about the work, your 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 body is full of chemicals, full of elements, and it's very important to keep that delicate balance of, of the elements mm -hmm. in, in, in your body because the elements and the chemicals in your body is involved in various biological processes, mm -hmm. right? So when you are exposed to, for example, heavy metals that can occur in water like lead or arsenic or these kinds of things, you introduce that into the, the body and that influences your physiological processes and that can then lead to diseases. Like for example, research has now shown that Alzheimer's, patients with Alzheimer's has high levels of aluminium in their brains. So there's various diseases that, that can be linked to what we call elemental dyshomeostasis. Mm -hmm. So why specifically hair? Yeah. Because people can use, we can use blood to, to test that and we can use, some people use fingernails, mm -hmm. some t people use uh, bone. But the problem with these uh, tissues is it's, it's uh, invasive. So you mm -hmm. cannot just go to someone and ask mm -hmm. them, give me a tooth. Yeah. <laughs> and we're all scared of getting our blood drawn. So hair is a really nice medium because also the, the levels of the chemicals in your blood varies based on, on, on the physiological processes. So it might not always be stable, but hair concentrates these elements. It's also like a uh, excretory organ. Mm -hmm. So everything that is toxic in the body gets deposited mm -hmm. in the hair, right? Mm -hmm. And also because these physiological processes in your body is influenced when your elements are, there's not that good balance in the elements is not there, or if you have toxic elements, this influences the physiology and obviously it will also influence the physiology of your hair. So the elemental levels will also differ in that. Mm -hmm. So um, we are looking at, at, at these kind of uh, chemicals. Now, as I said, also with hair, because it's very long, okay, not all people have long hair, yeah. but it, it, it has, yeah, but, but it has some, some 
uh, some some length mm -hmm. so you can retrospectively assess uh, uh, chemical exposure with as blood and also urine the, the detection window is not that long mm -hmm. so right so why do we, we use biophysics because in, in most uh, instances, people use um, conventional techniques to do, uh, analyze chemicals and elements, but sometimes the, the how you prepare your samples, you have to take the hair, you have to chemically process it to extract the element, and then when that process introduces some contaminants in, into your sample, right? And also sometimes these techniques are not sensitive enough, also um, sometimes they may just not the tech because the uh, technique to extract the chemical is not optimized. So that is why we use biophysics. So we use ion, what we call ion beam analysis techniques, right? So for that technique, you can just take the hair, you can keep it in its natural state, its natural physical state. You don't have to chemically treat it or anything. You just section it and then you introduce it into your system. So what happens with this technique is you get a device that accelerates particles, right? You use different types of atoms, particles for different types of application, and then you bombard your sample with that, right? So when that happens, these particles interact with the particles in your sample, right? And with that interaction causes some release of energy. And that energy that gets released is characteristic of different elements. So then with that downstream uh, technique and, and, and processing of the mm -hmm. data, you eventually get mm -hmm. to a concentration. So you can see the concentration levels in your hand. Also, with, with these techniques, it's very nice because you get also a map of whichever whatever tissue you 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 are mm -hmm. analyzing so you can see exactly where the chemicals are are deposited in the air for example with with hair analysis it's sometimes there's a lot of confounding variables so you need to understand whether the elements come from outside like for example if we have um, artisanal miners mining doing mining practices without uh, protective clothing you'll get a lot of metals deposited on the hair and with this technique you can see the metals actually distributed on on, on the outside of the hair but it's also good when you are doing hair analysis to um, try and compare it to other variables in the body as well other other, other indications of, of disease mm -hmm. like um, levels of antioxidant uh, in the blood and so forth yeah so hair has a, a lot of advantages um, and it has various applications also you can see if patients adhere to the medications you can test the hair and look if the medication for example hiv is a good example mm -hmm. yeah so you can look at the hair and see if they're adhering to medication also in for examples you can see if people are using drugs and also if they've been chronically or acutely uh, uh, exposed to certain uh, heavy metals in in water and and uh, occupational or environment so yeah there, there's a lot of uh, applications for hair what, what if yeah. I don't have the hair? <laughs> so how will you do the testing and analysis? Yes, so um, you can ba basically analyze um, hair from anywhere okay. in, in the body. Mm -hmm. So you can use different areas of hair. Uh, some people prefer to analyze pubic hair because it's less exposed to yeah. external contaminants mm -hmm. and chemicals. also, yeah, and chemicals. Because also if you dye your hair, people use a lot of yes. cosmetic treatments. Mm -hmm. For example, anti-dandruff shampoo will mm -hmm. add zinc to the hair. Mm -hmm. So that can then influence this, uh, your analysis so there's a lot of things you need to think about when you are doing hair analysis so there is a distinctive uh, property of the hair that you, yeah. you that that's why you use it yes yes so so like i said the the, the element or the chemical levels in in hair will be higher than in your blood mm -hmm. and also you can retrospectively assess exposure to for example heavy metals so so there are some some advantages to hair and analysis mm -hmm. yeah so how long will it take uh doing your analysis and doing your testing before we get all the informations and data. Yeah. So um, with any type of research, <laughs> there's, a, there's always a lot of work that goes into yeah. it before you can finally say, okay, this element is causing this disease because mm -hmm. sometimes diseases can also cause changes in, 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 in elemental levels in your body. And also, for example, with, with breast cancer patients, mm -hmm. the structure of the hair also changes. So um, a lot of work still needs to go into it. Mm -hmm. It's still a, a lot of research needs to be done on, on optimizing the, the techniques and and but we in we're in good progress with that mm -hmm. so we're trying to um, mm -hmm. really ascertain that mm -hmm. link between 
what is in the hay and how can we link it to disease and, and what can we use to, to, to solve this problem. Mm -hmm. Maybe if you have heavy metal um, contamination in your body, how, how we can treat that mm -hmm. perhaps by, by monitoring the levels in the hair. So, so there's really a lot of applications, but um, still a, lo a lot of work needs to be done in this. But what are the, oh, sorry. Yes, mm -hmm. no, no, it's but what are the usual challenges or risks uh, using this system? Well, um, the technique is unfortunately only available in certain parts of, yeah. of the world. Okay. okay, but with hair, it's 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 also the advantage you can just uh, you know take it and you mm -hmm. can send it via post okay. for analysis. Mm -hmm. So so that's one of the advantages because blood it's it's a bit difficult to to transport blood. Okay. So yeah, so. Um, yeah, so, so th this technique is available and, and what is also good, it will provide almost like uh, scientists can deliver also like a service uh, to, to the population in, in determining levels mm -hmm. of these elements in, in hair using the specific techniques. Because also um, this technique is very highly sensitive, so you can get parts per million levels of uh, element uh, detection level in, in your hair, so it's extremely sensitive, so it's a very a very good technique uh, mm -hmm. to be used mm -hmm. yeah so so who have already adopted uh, this kind of technique or system no it's unfortunately not yet used okay. it's not yet used we're still testing and mm -hmm. trying to because for example um, we found with a specific technique that um, cholesterol might be in hay Okay. Right, it might still be mm -hmm. there, and but how it will be put into mm -hmm. actual, you know, application is, is still there. There still needs to be done some some work on on, on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're still in in progress mm -hmm. with that. So right now yeah. you're here in the Philippines. Maybe we can adopt or use this. Yeah, yeah. This is because I've I've had very interesting discussions on um, with with another researcher here who mm -hmm. wants to collaborate on yes. some pro project because I've heard you have some problems with arsenic in your drinking water. Okay. So if we can test that and see how it's affecting, um, you know, the the chemical composition of, of of the body and maybe develop some intervention by giving patients some kind of treatment to lower the arsenic mm -hmm. level that that can also assist and then you can do consecutive tests and see how maybe the levels yeah. diminish mm -hmm. and yeah. also what does these high levels of ar arsenic what what kind what what, what are, how does it affect patients for example does it in, uh, affect their, their, their cognitive performance does it affect their infertility mm -hmm. so 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 there's a lot of uh, things that, that that we can do so so this is um, so yeah so I'm, I'm quite excited about the project that have been discussed and also infections and people with infectious diseases the chemical composition elemental levels will also be changed so if you can also test that with the hair and then see if you can find some intervention mm -hmm. give patients some type of medication or something that can lower it necessary and then monitor it over a period of time it will also be mm -hmm. quite useful All right, that was great and any do you have any final words to our televiewers Oh, I, I would just like to say um, I'm really enjoying the Philippines and, and this wonderful conference and you are just a very, very lovely country with very, very nice people, warm and friendly. I, I love the hospitality. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you so much and we hope to see you soon when you yes, come back. Yes, I'll come and visit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I look forward definitely to coming back. Unfortunately, um, I have to leave the country mm. on, on, on Saturday mm. because I have other mm. commitments, but I really look forward to coming back soon. Mm. Hey? Thank you so much, ma'am, and good luck on your much, future eh? projects. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. That was Dr. Karen J. Cluete. Good morning sa Jel. Good morning po sa lahat ng taga-subaybay ng USTV. Kasalukuyan ay nakaranas tayo ng maulap na kalangitan sa malaking bahagi ng Luzon kasama ang Metro Manila. At yun yung papansin sa silangang bahagi 
ng uh, bansa, ito yung bahagi ng uh, Pacific Ocean, wala tayong binabantay ang bagyo o low pressure area. At uh, dahil sa Intertropical Convergence Zone o ITCZ, kusa na apektuhan ang Southern Luzon at Visayas, ang Metro Manila, Calabarzon, Mimaropa, Western Visayas at Sambuanga Peninsula. May mga karanas ng uh, maulap na kalangitan na may mga mahina hanggang sa katamtamang pagulan. Minsan may mga malalakas sa pagulan, malakas ang hangin at kidlat dahil sa thunderstorm. Samantala, ang nalabing bahagi ng bansa ay mga karanas ng bahagyang maulap hanggang sa maulap na papawarin na may mga isolated mga pagulan, kadalasan sa hapon o gabi. Dako man tayo sa mga piling lugar, dito sa Metro Manila, bukas ay nasa natin na mag magiging maganda panahon maliban sa mga isolated mga pagulan o thunderstorm. Ganun din sa Miyerkules at Huwebes. At ganun din sa Baguio City na inaasang po natin ng maganda panahon maliban sa mga isolated mga pagulan o thunderstorm sa susunod tat ng tatlong araw at ganun din sa Metro Cebu. Subalit, dito sa Metro Dabao, bukas, magiging maulap po tayo. Halos buong araw po yan at may nasang po tayo na mga mahinang pagulan hanggang sa katantamang pagulan at may kasamang thunderstorm. Pero, Pagdating ng Merkoles, mag-uumpisa ulit na maganda panahon maliban sa mga isolated mga pagulan o thunderstorm. Pumayang hapon, inaasahan po natin ang araw lulubog sa ganap na 5.45 ng hapon. Para sa mga karagdagang update, i-follow ang ating official social media account ng Pag-asa sa Twitter, YouTube at Facebook. Bisa tayong lagi ang Pag-asa website www.pagasa .usd.gov.ph Mula sa Pag-asa, Weather Forecasting Section, ako po sa Alzar D. Aurelio. DOS TV would like to thank Filipino Creazione de Mano Incorporated. Visit their showroom at Ground Floor Lobby, PSM BFI Building, 318 Santon Road, West Crame, San Juan City. CITAV, the world's leading source of reliable and authoritative news. Views and analysis on information about science and technology for global development. Visit their website at www.sidev.net. And that's it for today. For more information, just log on to www.dostv.ph and visit our social media accounts. Abangan din ang update sa lagay ng panahon mula sa DOST Pag-asa tuwing alas 5 ng umaga at alas 5 ng hapon. Always remember, in progress, science is the key. Kaya naman sabay-sabay tayong makiisa at gamitin ang siyensya. Kami ang DOSTV, the program that delivers science for the people.